Welcome back to the show. Up now is part two of my interview with David Henderson. David is a professor of economics at the Naval Postgraduate School and a research fellow at Stanford University's Hoover Institute. In this segment, David and I played Would You Rather. Now, I made him choose between minimum wage and social programs or a simple basic income. Now, he didn't like either of these options, but we loved his response. Take a look. If I have to choose and I don't like that choice, <laughs> I would say a basic income, but a very small number. And of course, it depends how many of those other programs we're eliminating. Uh, the point is that I want to, A, save money for the general taxpayer, and B, retain incentives. So if you have some basic income that's low, and you don't have a phase out, you can have very good incentives, because you make an extra dollar and you pay just normal taxes on it, you don't lose some of your basic income. But the kind of number we're talking, because I've run those numbers, the kind of number we're talking where it doesn't increase the size of government is probably something like three or four thousand dollars per person per year. And so that doesn't quite do it in giving people even a poverty level level of income if they don't do anything else. What I'd rather do, well, you, you said I can't do that, so th that's my. <laughs> no, no. Let's let's choice. hear what you'd rather do. I, I want to hear what you. What would be your solution? Right. What I'd rather do is get rid of this slew of regulations that are holding people back. Twenty-seven percent of people work in occupations now where they have to get government permission to practice. Occupational licensure, it's called. There's an economist named Morris Kleiner who's written extensively about this. Make it easy to run a business. Make it easy to start a business. Make all of those things easy. And I'm not saying all kinds of poor people are going to start their own businesses. Some of them will. But a lot of poor people will start working for people who start their own businesses. Now, some of our guests see the Federal Reserve and central banks as destructive, but our guests Nick Rowe, David Beckworth, and Scott Sumner, they suggest that a central bank that targets a constant rate of growth in nominal economic output, or NGDP, would be a really effective one. So what's your, your view on this subject? Well, I respect all three of those economists. By the way, I, I bet you with David Beckworth, it depends on the particular question you asked him. I think if you asked him, do you want to have a Federal Reserve, his answer would be the same as mine, absolutely not. So I think he, and certainly Nick Rowe and Scott Sumner, are working within the context that we have a Federal Reserve. And so I think targeting NG, nominal gross domestic product is a good idea, given that we have a Federal Reserve. Having said that, I think there's a whole other discussion we should be having about the Fed, and that is this. Even if we have a Federal Reserve, should it be doing what it's increasingly doing since Bernanke, which is starting to plan, centrally plan investments, centrally plan financial markets. Bernanke moved massively into financial markets and didn't just provide liquidity the way Alan Greenspan did during various crises. And I think that is a real serious problem. Now, our guest Steve Hankey has argued that in Europe, the steep fall in monetary aggregates and credit, what he calls monetary austerity, is what's responsible for the terrible economy over there. So is he right? And if so, what should the ECB do about it? Okay, so first of all, I haven't studied as much as he has or as much as Scott Sumner has. But as you might know, Aaron, Scott is a co-blogger with me on Econ Log, and so I read his posts there. And from what Scott Sumner says, I think that's absolutely right, that they have had monetary austerity, and that's really bad. And by the way, there's a very simple solution. Turn it around. Print money at a higher clip. Recent economics Nobel Prize winner Jean Tirole points to the huge role that state still plays in France and suggests, suggesting the French need structural reforms like we saw in Scandinavia and Germany. So is Tirole right? And how can the Europeans provide any relief to Europe and expect structural reforms to occur in France and Italy? I think he's absolutely right. How they can expect it, I don't know. If you saw his statement, well, I'm sure you did. You quoted from it. He was very pessimistic about the prospects for France. And I found that interesting, because here he is. I got up in, it, and saw him, saw the phone call, heard the phone call when they talked to him right away. 
after he was, it was announced that he was the winner. That was at 4 a.m. Pacific time. And, of course, he's floating on air, and so that was his whole tone. But only hours later, in an interview with a French television station, he's kind of come back to earth, and he says, we've got a serious problem here. And I went back and then looked at some of his other work, and earlier he had written about this. He'd written about how Canada did it. So is it impossible to do it? No, it's not impossible to do it. But he's pessimistic that the French government will do it, and I am too. That was David Henderson, professor of economics at the Naval Postgraduate School and research fellow at Stanford University's Hoover Institute. Time now for today's Big Deal.